Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at Blue Bank Resort on Real Foot Lake. If you're looking for the best place on the lake for fishing, eagle watching, or enjoying some of the best catfish in the region, you'll find it at Real Foot Lake. Visit bluebankresort.com and reserve your cabin today. In today's episode, Scott sits down with Robert Spencer, who was born and raised in Jackson, Tennessee, was an actor, a director, and is currently running for city council. And later, join us as we discover something new here at Discovery Park of America. I'm Scott Williams, host of Real Foot Forward, where each week we celebrate our little section of the South, and just like at our museum and heritage park here in Union City, Tennessee, we explore the culture, the spirit, the accomplishments, and the heritage of West Tennessee. Today's guest, Robert Spencer, is a West Tennessean who found success in Hollywood and New York, but returned home to raise his family, bring a little of that West Coast magic to the South, and is now hoping to serve the people of Jackson, Tennessee, as a city councilman in District 7. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm very blessed and very fortunate to be here. Thank you. So let's let's talk a little bit about about how you started out, where you were born, and and were you a theater kid, and how did you end up wanting to become an actor? Uh, that's the funny part. I, I uh, was born in Jackson, Tennessee. Um, I was a Navy brat, so we were, I was born here. We lived here for a little while, and then my dad, being in the Navy, we had to move around. I moved around quite a lot. My dad retired from the Navy. Um, in 1985 and moved back here and I went to high school here, um, spent some time at UT Martin and that's where I found the, the bug for theater. Um, there, William Snyder, professional, Professor William Snyder, uh, may he rest in peace, was the ultimate, supreme, fantastic professor of all. I mean, he just inspired so much and pulled out so many really fun things about theater. In fact, it, it, I'm getting goosebumps just sitting in this black box theater uh, that we're talking in, uh, just having great memories of, of the classes. that he, he, he was such a profound and energetic and fun person. And uh, that's where I got my bug for theater. Um, unfortunately, it didn't uh, go anywhere much past you know going to... Uh, do theater at UT Martin as a college student there. Uh, and it kind of kind of took a resting period while I joined the military shortly thereafter. Because they, they don't have theater in the Navy? No, and typically there aren't any theater boxes or, you know, big seated areas for fun. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it is interesting. You wouldn't necessarily think of UT Martin as the place people would go to discover theater, but it is an incredible uh, college. With I was just there yesterday um, w- with some of their folks from their fine arts department. Oh, they and, have the best. It's a beautiful facility. and they, They've even expanded on it since I've been there. It's just they, they're very, very blessed. And t- truly, West Tennessee is very blessed to have UT Martin. Yeah, well, and there is a whole cultural thing in West Tennessee that a lot of people might not pick up on. The, the arts you know, is celebrated. There's a lot of people here. Music is important, but also... You know, theater is a big part of our culture right, as well. Right, and it goes, it's very intertwined, you know, so it's its very important to have great music, you know. I mean, that, that's why they play nice music while you're in a museum or, I mean, you know that. So mm-hmm. it's very important to, to blend the two. It pulls out. It's almost like when you're drinking a glass of wine and you're having uh, strawberries or something, it pulls out the flavor. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you, um, at some point, you got out of the Navy and you said, you know what, I'm going to become an actor. How'd that happen? Um, well, it, it had to take a little bit of a, a time wait. Uh, it didn't happen that quickly. It was, uh, I got out of the Navy, moved back to Jackson, and and I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go finish my degree. So I went to Lambeth where my dad graduated and graduated in a year because I had so many college credits, graduated in a year and met my wife shortly thereafter. And uh, we ended up moving to Knoxville. And 
when I was kind of walking around Knoxville, I started thinking, oh, I'm back at a UT. I'm back at a, I wonder, is there a theater place here? So I kind of looked around and started talking to people there and um, almost got into a couple of projects over there. Um, but it just didn't seem like, I, I, the times never matched up. I, I never auditioned, but the times just never matched up. So I, I wasn't able to fully pursue it. But the, the interest was starting to spark up again. What, ha- what happened next to inspire you to go ahead and take the next step in the dramatic world? Um, well, I was in the Tennessee Army National Guard. And I was an officer, medical service officer. They don't have a lot of theater in the National no, Guard either. No, unfortunately, no. I mean, they do have the word theater, uh, but it's a different context, <laughs> you know. But um, uh, I was medically discharged, unfortunately, and um, it was in a. It was kind of a double-edged sword. It was a blessing, and at the same time, I was kind of like, oh, I wore it my twenty years, you know, but. Uh, that inspired us to say, okay, what, what's next? Um, my wife and I, and we, and we had been married um, at this time, uh, decided to move to New York City. And I was thinking, oh, hey, they have theater in New York City. They do. They do have theater in New York City. Yeah, so the Navy, they didn't have it. The Army didn't have it. But You landed uh, in the right place. I heard New York City had theater and if you can make it there you can make it (laughs) yeah that's true (laughs) so you i mean that was that was kind of a big a big decision just to head to head to new york city um what um at some point in this story you're going to end up at saturday night live so but i know there was a long path before you ended up there um what what uh what did you start just doing uh go, going and doing um what do you call it when you try out try auditions, auditions, uh, auditions yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah is that yeah. is that what you did um well i would i would be um I, I would regret not mentioning my sister-in-law was already up there so it was kind of one of the reasons why hey if we already know somebody up there so it helps. Let's, let's go up there and we can we can all live together and so that was yeah. that's what we did uh just for a little while and uh, when I was up there, I was working um, at a, a college in the Bronx, and it was, it was really fun and interesting. And I started seeing all these flyers and audition here and audition there. And I thought, okay, this is my chance. So I did. I started auditioning. I started, you know, getting in independent films, um, whatever I could uh to, to get in front of a camera or in front of an audience, I, I did it um, while working a full-time job. And your job was teaching? Uh, no, I was an admissions counselor. Okay. I was going to the high schools in, in the Bronx and New York City um, and, and just trying to encourage kids to, you know, hey, college is very important. Mm-hmm. That's great. All right. It was, it was a lot of fun. And, in fact, I used some of the – the processes that I had gone through to encourage them, to, you know, because they would say, well, I, I want to be a, an actor. I want to, well, there are things that you need to do before you do that. It's called, you know, taking lessons at which I was doing at the same time and making sure that that is something that you can do and, and support your family. So getting a college degree would be something um, that, that would be at least if you don't make it, you could kind of say, okay, well, I'll, I'll go, do something else. Well, I mean, a lot of people go to New York or Hollywood to try to make it. I mean, you got in a lot of things, and you were able to have a, a thespian career. I, I, I was. I, I, I did some off, off-Broadway off kind of things, and then I did um, uh, some really fun things with um, independent films. And then my wife, being a nurse, met um, some very significant people you know, just by being a labor and delivery nurse. And she had mentioned, hey, my, my husband's an actor. He likes, the, he, he likes these kind of things. And, um, and that was my introduction to getting into background work for Saturday Night Live. And I was there for a whole season. I met so many fascinating, fantastic, uh, 
crazy funny people, and it was just it was so much fun. Yeah, who I, were the some of the people that were on that season that we would so we can pinpoint which um, season you were? Well, uh, it was um, uh, Alec Baldwin for one, uh, one of my most um, admired actors, uh, and I have forever. I mean, I can't I can't think of a time that I haven't admired Alec Baldwin. Politics aside, um, but his he's just a talent. Um, uh, John C. Riley, fantastic, yeah. really neat guy. Uh, the for the first time, uh, he wasn't on one of the shows, but he come or he came to visit quite often. Was Jimmy Fallon, and Jimmy Fallon and I hit it off very well, and and you know kind of progressed into a friendship, and and uh, he was just a really neat guy. Um, if you ever want to get Jimmy Fallon to come to Discovery Park of America, you let me know. Yeah, I'll ask him and yeah. see what he says. Yeah, we'll, we'd love to have him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're asking me right off the you know, to list all the names. Was, uh, it, was it the Amy Poehler? Season? Amy Poehler was there. Okay, yeah, for I'd, sure. She was yeah. a awesome. Uh, Kristen Wiig, Kristen, um, and Jason. Jay, I could never say his last name. Jason Skadowski, or yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, I never, he's a really neat guy, very really nice guy. But uh, Christian Wig was like the protector of background actors. She, she was awesome. She, you know, if, if somebody wasn't kind of really nice to us, she would say, hey, these are our background actors. Be nice to them. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> she was yeah, awesome. That's yes. great. Yeah, she was, yeah. She it's was the same great. thing with people that, that uh, treat the folks that are working behind the scenes nice on any production is yes. always remembered by everybody. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so another person I wanted to ask you about that I know is in your life, and I'm not sure how you ended up in Florida, but is Burt Reynolds. Right. Um, Beth, my wife, and I decided that, um, you know, our, our lease was up. Uh, our apartment was so small. Um, we thought, okay, what what's next for us? And um, did you have kids yet? Or No, no, this is no children. Um, we decided what's next for us and said, uh, well, I've, I've always wanted to live in Florida, you know, I, I want to go back to Florida. And so that's what we did. We kind of air, you know, decided that's Florida was where we need to go. So, uh, long story short, um, I, I can't remember exactly how I heard about Mr. Reynolds being down there. Uh, when I got there, but I do remember um, meeting him for the first time when I walked through the museum, and here he was over there sitting on this big, like, like luxurious sofa, and he it was it was picture perfect Burt Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wow, that That's is incredible. Mr. Reynolds. That, I can't believe it. And then, yeah. so they came over there and and walked us over there and said, okay, we're going to meet you, or we're going to introduce you to uh, Mr. Reynolds. And um, he sat me down and just said, hey, tell me about yourself. You know, kind of similar to this, but without the microphones. <laughs> and I started talking to him about, you know, my dad was a retired military and police officer. And he's, his eyes started sparking. And I thought, oh, he, is he a military family? Or, but his father was actually a, a law enforcement guy. So we kind of had this moment of connection and... And then some of the things that I shared with him, he kind of had similar um, experiences with in our childhood. And it was just kind of like uh, one of those instant uncle kind of feelings. I'm mean, kind of like, wow, I've always admired him on TV, but now he's, he's my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's incredible. When you have an encounter with somebody like that who, yeah. who turns out to be is what you would hope. I, I, he fulfilled and it, it overfilled uh, the bucket on, on, on my expectations. Did you do theater there in Florida? I did. I actually um, auditioned to be a master theater um, student of his and was able to, you know, become uh, a member of the master acting class. 
Oh, that's great. So you 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 kept going with Bert. And, I, I and did. Yeah. Well, we always had to call him Mr. Reynolds. Um, Mr. It, it Reynolds. It was just kind of a yeah. thing. Um, there was a few people that would call him Bert. But or Smokey. You couldn't call no, him Smokey. He, I mean, you could. I mean, I, Smokey. I guess he was the bandit. He the wasn't bandit, Smokey. Yeah. yeah, he'd be the bandit. But he's he was. Uh, he's very distinguished. When you're when you're in his presence, you just kind of feel like. Um, I mean, I got, you have to kind of appreciate art or theater to understand what I'm saying, but mm-hmm. he, he was kind of like a um, uh, a legend in in the in the craft that you want to be really really good at, mm-hmm. and he was. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they yeah. don't. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, at some point, you made it back. You made it back this way. What what motivated you to return home? Um, well, we 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 were in um, Florida for about four and a half years or so, and and but before I moved back home, we were in Los Angeles, and I, I moved to Los Angeles and did the same thing. Of course, I was working at, in Florida in higher education too. I love how mobile you guys were. Where nothing, we, you just view up and left and went other places. That's great. Yeah, well, I guess when my wife and I got, when we decided to get married, um, we had this conversation. It might be a little different how she tells it, but it's very similar um, in the way I tell it. As far as um, what the way she says it and the way I say it, sometimes it, it kind of. You know, changes a little bit. My wife and I are the same way. Yeah, that makes okay, there feel you go. Better. Thanks yeah. for asking me there. Yeah. Um, but she she said, okay, you've been to 32 different countries. You've been to every um, uh, continent except for Alaska. I mean, except for Alaska. I mean, was that a moment there? <laughs> what was that lady that ran for president? <laughs> yeah. Um, every, yeah. Every continent except for Australia. <laughs> and... Um, uh, so before we get married, we need to travel. So that was the agreement: is, is that we traveled a bit. So we we did that. That's incredible. We did that with my kids when they were little. We decided to travel all over, and it's it's pay, travel is the thing that pays off. Uh, people who work with kids say that you can really tell the difference between kids who have traveled right. and kids who haven't. And that uh, when I was at UT yesterday, they were saying they try to get the college kids to visit international countries because if you don't travel. By the time you're 25, the chances are you probably won't. So right, right. travel is really important. Right. So you were in L.A. You had a kid while you were out there? Oh uh, no, not yet. Not yet. No, we. Um, I, I did do some um, independent films um, down. Did you in do Florida. some faith based faith based films? Um, no, I was trying to get a couple of faith based okay. films off the ground uh, that I had written. And they're on the back burner. I, I do feel like that, you know, God wants me to do that, and I feel like one of these days it will happen. But right now they're on the on the back burner. But I did uh, 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 while I was in Florida, we did a um, movie. George Romero was our executive producer, and George Romero is the Night of the Living Dead director. Oh sure, and uh, yeah, he's huge. He, he, I was a one of the stars for Dead Time Stories. It's a um, you know horror film. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but we actually filmed that in South Carolina. Hmm. Um, so, I, but I was living in Florida, so they flew me over to South Carolina, and it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, but I, I did some independent things here and there. Um, nothing huge or you know majorly successful, but it was filling a void that that I really enjoyed. Um, I, I love theater. I love acting. I love behind the scenes. Um, uh, I really enjoyed it. And, and I did that in Los Angeles too while I was working at another career college down there. Yeah. I mean, you've been able to be exposed to all different aspects of the production and, you know, behind the camera, in front of the camera. And, right. you know, I mean, it, you've had a you've had a huge amount of work that you've been able to do when you think about the people that – that don't get to do any of any work, you know, it's, well, I'm it's very, a tough business. I, I have to be very uh, humble about it because I, I, there are so many more people out there that have done way more than me, but there are some, like you said, that haven't even got the chance. And you really, if you really want to do something like that, you really need to pursue it. You need to say, okay, I'm going to, 
I'm going to take the time to do it. Um, get a job. That's that's the best way of doing it. Get a job. But when you're off work, go and do something. You know, if it's just little theater things or uh, or it's constantly auditioning, um, that in itself is experience that will one day pay off. Well, it's honing your craft and trying to get good at what you do. Absolutely. And, um, um, so at some point, you had a baby and you came back home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our first baby, uh, we had uh, a Catherine in... Um, April 10th, 2013, as she says very often, because <laughs> she's reminding of us, reminding of us her birthday coming yep. up soon. So, yep. um, yeah, we we had our first baby, and she was actually born in North Carolina. Uh, we kind of had a stop in North Carolina after Los Angeles, where my wife was working at Duke University. And um, that was a lot of fun living there. Um I actually did try audition a few things there because um, there's there's quite good theater stuff there, um, but um, I didn't really pursue it as strongly as I'd liked. I, I was actually trying to work at Duke myself, um, but we we were talking one day and, and decided, okay, we need our family. <laughs> this mm-hmm. raising kids, especially thing. with a little kid, yeah. We need our family and and. Uh, all, all of our family, except for her brother Tommy, um, uh, all of her, bro- all of her family, all of my family, except for Tommy, all live here in in Jackson. In Jackson, oh, right? Wow. And so, um, Tommy lives in Houston, Texas, and he's a art professor over there at a community college. And uh, we we just we decided, okay, Jackson, we need to be there. And then we moved here. Um, it was it was a blessing in disguise because you know one we had the only grandchild at the time, and so everyone just kind of swarmed. Okay, can I have Catherine now? Can I? Yeah, you know, can I? That's oh, always nice. Okay, sure, you can have Catherine. <laughs> yeah. Let's go out to eat, um, which is what you do when you live in Jackson. Yeah, and um, then some, somehow or another, it's amazing how this happens. We had another kid, mm-hmm. so I was like, "Wow, I'm glad we're here in Jackson because yeah. um, two kids, you know." And I was already an older, you know, father. I was thinking, okay, but I'm I'm a healthy older father. But, <laughs> but uh, I was thinking, okay, I, we, we can handle this, and and then another, you know, three three kids now. So, yeah. and that was our first, our, our last child. Laura Ashley was born um, in August of last year. So, and then what what uh, job were you doing when you came back? Like what what brought you back, and what, um, what well, you've got so you've got so many different areas you could have gone into. Well, um, I was a dean of students at a private school here in Jackson until their money ran out, and oddly enough, um, I. I I kind of feel bad, but I don't feel bad because you know. At the same time, I um, I, I, I really enjoyed the job, but at, oddly enough, my hookups or the people that I knew from theater and acting and movies, uh, they at one they had at one time agreed to come down and try to do fundraising mm. for the school. Yeah, but. Somehow or another, before that conversation happened, they said, okay, we're going to have to let you go for this position because we've run out of money. We yeah. love you. We think you're great. Yeah. But that that has been eliminated, yeah. and I'm really sorry. Yeah. I was like, oh, great, because I was going to have some of my my guys come down and try to do some fundraising, but you know, I'll save that nugget for later. You could use that for us at once again Discovery Park of America if you, <laughs> yeah. if you decide to to do that. Yeah. Um, so so now you're running for office. You're gonna serve. You're gonna attempt to serve. What what uh, inspired that move? Um, well, it goes back to my military service, and even further, it goes back to watching my dad serve. Uh, you know, twenty three years in the Navy. 16 years in the Madison County Sheriff's Department, 
Uh, and I did 11 years in the military, five years in the Navy, six years in the National Guard. I was a commission officer. Um, and I missed it. I miss serving. I miss being with people that have uh, a distinct opportunity to serve and to be uh, a blessing or be strong for someone where they can't be strong for themselves. And uh, I miss that. I, uh, so I thought, I, I kind of bided my time. I watched some of the things that are happening. And I watched the commissioner elections um, last year and I decided, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, get the next opportunity. And then when Mr. Wallace, Randy Wallace announced that he wasn't going to, to run again, uh, I reached out to him and I said, Hey, I, I think, I think I'd be a good candidate. And he agreed. He said, yeah, I think you'd be a good candidate too. And, um, being a veteran, being a, uh, you know, an educated veteran, with your background, you're, you're so experienced, I think you'd be a great, you know, city councilman. So I, I put my hat in. And um, <clears throat> so uh, some elections like in Jackson, I don't know anything about running for city council in Jackson. Is there a debate or do they, you know, are there opportunities for you to talk about your platform or how does that work? Um, Mostly it's word of mouth and and your Facebook page or if you have a website or whatnot. Your Facebook page is good, I was going to tell you. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, but most of uh, – there's only been uh, one forum for us to have a voice, um, and I think they divided it by with two days at the NAACP, and it was a great experience. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it, and uh, I had – I received a lot of great compliments. My wife was there, so that was a real, a real blessing for me. And the only reason or a way that she could have been there is, you know, with our kids is our families here. They had to watch oh. our kids. So yeah. um, that was awesome to see her out in the audience smiling and, and kind of giving me that, hey, you're doing a great job. Yeah, you that's know? great. Yeah, I was very blessed. Very, what, very do, you, do you, you mentioned the family being here. Do you miss anything about being other you know other places is there you know anything you miss about la or new york or florida um, yes i do i mean uh, yes uh, there part of what i have developed over the years is part of my life culture you know um i i've been i've scuba dived for years i miss that um i i love acting and theater and, and getting involved in, in the arts and supporting people that want to get in those, those aspects of, you know, film, TV. Uh, I, I mean, just sitting in this place is just getting my goosebumps up. I'm thinking, wow, this is a really neat. Is there a, is there a theater uh, here in uh, Jackson? Well, um, there is a there is a theater at the UT or not UT uh, University of Memphis Lambeth campus, um, but I think they've kind of reorganized it for music uh, to teach music. And there's a there's a really active uh, theater troupe in Union City at the Masquerade Theater. It's been turned into an actual performance theater. Oh wow! They just did a huge production of Shrek, and I oh. mean I've seen theater all over the world. Right. I promise it was the best performance I've ever seen. Oh, every person hit every note. It was unbelievable. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, we had to go twice. We liked it so much. So There, there are um, some of the schools, I, I believe it's more of the private schools, they have some great um, theater productions. And, um, and then there are um, the, ballet, the ballets here, and they're doing mm -hmm. very well. Um, yeah. They should and need more support they should get mm -hmm. and and they need more support but they have done some great great productions i mean i think I, people don't understand the importance of um arts in small towns rural communities i mean it plays a really important role it does uh, in fact and i'm taking a graduate class right now in leadership and um one of the questions we ha we have this kind of a dialogue it's an online class it's it's a discussion group and the dialogue was, um, why are uh, why is humanities, why is the liberal arts important to a nurse or a a business guy? Well, 
long story short is it's very important because it kind of puts you on a level with a person, a human, another person to be more personable, to be kind of like, um, a nice person. You don't, you don't like, for example, a, a nurse can't do their job effectively um, just by doing the science of, of their job. They have to go in and say, Hey, how are you doing? You know, look at the patient and kind of see, are, are their eyes, you know, focused on me or not? That's kind of the science of it. But at the same time, they're thinking, okay, I've seen this before, or I've, uh, I'm getting this feeling. It, it, it develops your humanity, and by taking these liberal arts classes and reading through um, humanity classes, it, it it makes you human, and right. you, it's very important. You can't just lead a group without some kind of human aspect to it. All right. Well, you know, I mean, as important as uh, STEM is, if you've got kids, you hear all about STEM: science, technology, right. engineering, right. math. Having that A in there, STEAM, is what we, you know, focus on at Discovery Park because the arts are important. Right. Um, so it's an important part of an overall well-rounded education because you're absolutely right. All right. It's very important to be well, well-rounded. Well, good luck on your uh, city council run. Wow, thanks um, very much. If Andrew Gibson ever runs for city council in Union City, Tennessee, he's got my vote. But for now, let's spend a few minutes as he shares his latest discovery with us from Discovery Park of America. All right. Thank you, Scott. I am Andrew Gibson with the Education Department here at Discovery Park of America. And today I'm with Chandler McCullough, a docent here, um, who will be telling us more about the beautiful chapel we have on site here. Uh, so, Chandler, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I kind of took fascination in the chapel. Um, it's just really beautiful inside, and I just wanted to know more about it. So I kind of dug in and did some research and I found out. So it's it's called the New Chapel United Methodist Church. It's actually um, a church that was donated from about mm, 20 miles away um, down in Elbridge, Tennessee. Um, it was donated by the Elbridge Cemetery Association. A little bit of history about it. So it started out as Davidson Chapel um, back in the 1840s, but then it burned down in a forest fire, kind of sad. Um, so they had to rebuild. So they rebuilt um, and called it Elbridge Methodist Church. It lasted for a while, um, about 45 years. And then a storm came through and basically damaged it beyond repair. And so they finally got the building that they're in now, or that the building that we have now, and they built it like a New England colonial style. They kind of merged four local congregations and basically called it New Chapel United Methodist Church. And that was back in uh, 1900. <clears throat> and so it's been around for over 100 years. But at that time, the congregation was about 277 members. So pretty big church. Um, but then tragedy struck again, and the, the tower bell fell over. Um, a stove caught fire inside the church, but they still they were able to manage. Um, they remodeled. They put up some sheetrock on the, on the walls, kind of got it more up to date, and they celebrated their um, 100-year anniversary in 1952 and added the stained glass windows that are currently in there now um, that are really pretty. <clears throat> well, in 2010... Um, the congregation basically started dying off. They were really old, so they started dying off um, and got down to seven people. And so they just decided they couldn't afford to keep the building anymore. Um, so what they did was the Elbert Cemetery Association, which was right next door, took it over um, and eventually donated it to Discovery Park in 2012. Um, and so in order to move it here, we didn't just pick it up. There's nobody strong enough just to pick it up. So. They took the roof off, um, took the stained glass windows out, and folded the walls down so it looked like a cardboard box just laying on a truck. They drove it over here to um, O'Brien County and to uh, Union City, where we're at, and they set it up with a crane, pulled the walls up, and basically set it up and re uh, just redid it to where to kind of bring back that original charm. Um, all of the, the wood on the wood paneling on the walls is original. The hardwood floors are original. Um, we also have the original pews in there um, with the red kind of foam mats there. I don't. I hope nobody had a long service because that would have hurt your butt for a little while. But but yeah, so all that's original. We have original hymnals and Bibles in there as well. 
but it's just a beautiful church. Um, I actually got to meet a couple that got married in the church before it was moved to um, Discovery Park, and she actually grew up in the church, and she kind of told me more about it, but um, just the history of the church and just kind of the beauty of it that you can see here at Discovery Park is definitely worth your time. Thank you, Chandler. Uh, I know I certainly learned something new about our our chapel we have on the grounds here. And uh, for those of you who have not made it out to the park yet, uh, we invite you to come out, uh, see the beautiful grounds we have here in the chapel that's that's nested here. Uh, And if you feel so inclined while you're here, uh, you can get married out in the chapel. We have some beautiful ceremonies that happen out there. Uh, So once again, thank you all for listening to the Real Foot Forward uh, West Tennessee podcast. And we hope to see you here at Discovery Park of America real soon. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates. Mm